to begin. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me on this uh, rainy Friday the 13th. It's actually my daughter's 16th birthday, so it's a good luck day for her. Um, I'm excited to share with you the experiences and knowledge that I have gained from having two WBE certified businesses. Um, so I'm going to kind of give a little disclaimer because I'm not an agent, a government agency. I'm just an entrepreneur who has worked uh, the WBE certification for over 10 years. Um, and this presentation is to bring awareness on what it can mean to be certified and to provide, to provide ideas to you on what to do and how to work your certification to maximize its efficiencies. Um, so it's an information only uh, presentation. So a little bit about me, um, I've been in the chemical industry for over 37 years and uh, selling to major paint and coatings companies and also founded a water treatment chemical company as a strategic small business partner for Ecolabs and Nalco. Uh, both of those two businesses are WBE certified. TH Hilson Company was sold to a global um, company out of Belgium in 2016. Um, and, and what's so interesting about that is um, the business that we had gained as a WBE stayed with um, that acquisition. Uh, so a lot of questions come from what do I do when I build a strong business as a WBE? There are ways that you can keep that business and maintain that business. Um, I started HC Strategic Advisors because I was doing a lot of speaking events um, for the chemical industry and for women in a male dominated industry. And it's now my platform for the book that just got released, You Hold the Power. And actually this chapter, Leveraging Your Assets and Owning Your Power is one of the chapters in my book. So today we're gonna to go over is, is certification right for your business? And what can it mean for you? If you're certified, awesome. What do you do with your certification? And how do you um, get some ideas on developing a supplier diversity business plan and get help when needed? Okay. So just some facts. And, and I do wanna say, um, the WBE Women Business Enterprise Programming and all of the things that I'm going to be talking about can also apply to minority business as well, okay? But this is really focused on women in business. So four out of 10 businesses are owned by women and the numbers are staggering. 11.6 million firms are women owned generating $1.7 trillion in sales and employing 9 million people. Really, you know, women business owners, there's a, it's a force to be reckoned with. And 25% of women-owned businesses generate over $1 million in revenues. So I'm going to talk about my experience um, with my water treatment chemical company, Essential Water Technologies. We are WeBank certified. We are WOSB, which is government. I'm gonna go into each area and what that can mean for you. We're state of Illinois, city of Chicago, and we're in the process of getting the state of Wisconsin as well. The visibility that I have gained from being a WBE through Essential Water Technologies, you know, as a recipient of Crane's Noble Entrepreneur, Enterprising Women of the Year, but bigger value of that, I mean, the awareness, the marketing, that's that's wonderful to get your name out there. But to have those matchmaking sessions at the WeBank conference, um, at the WBDC, which is the certifying arm that certifies WBEs, there is so many procurement diversity people at these workshops, at these conferences that will invite you to come and pitch to their teams. So having these one-on-one -on -one opportunities is, is amazing. And so this is the platform that I use a lot to gain access to the proper gatekeepers at the corporation level. And I will talk a little bit more about that. Being asked to speak, um, having potential for supplier consolidation uh, with the companies that you might be working with, 
collaborating with other WBEs and having industry interviews. These are all, you know, visibility that I've gained from being a women-owned business and being a certified women-owned business. Through these meetings and conferences and one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions, I've been a certified WBE for over 10 years. Um, these are some of the names on um, some of the member contacts that um, I have had the privilege of, you know, meeting and um, talking to and trying to develop plans with. So it gives you an idea of the breadth of opportunity that's there. And if you have any questions along the way, as Stella said, please feel free, raise your hand. I, I love to have a, a conversation. So the different types of classification, to be a WBE, what this, what this really gives to you and um, one of the most recognized certifications, because there's a lot of confusion out there, a lot of different ways to become a WBE. The WeBank certification is the one that's most widely recognized and the one that it has these conferences that I'm talking to you about. Um, they are the national accounts and corporations that have a supplier, usually have a supplier diversity procurement person who is kind of the gatekeeper that will get you introduced, you know, to the proper people within those organizations. So when you're looking at this slide, this is pertaining to the certifications that I have, but it also will share with you, does your business align? Can you sell to national accounts? Is this an opportunity for you? So when you're looking at certification right for you, you need to see a fit. Always, 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 there's the marketing component to this, the visibility and the collaboration with other WBEs that's, um, that's paramount in becoming certified. But if you want to be able to really gain business, have access to national accounts, I really highly recommend you become WeBank certified because it's a national platform for you. Along with that, when you are becoming certified, the WBDC, which is the Women's Business um, Development um, uh, program, and they're the certifying arm, they're third party that come into your facility and verify that you are qualified to be a certified business owner. They also have programs as well where you can meet these national procurement people. If you have a lot of business within hospitals, energy, government, institutions, municipalities, then you want to get your WOSB, your Women-Owned Small Business Certification. And when you're certifying through WeBank, this is an option for you. City of Chicago, it's a requirement to participate on some of the city bids. It's, a, it's very hard to get a City of Chicago certification. It's much easier when you have a WeBank certification, you start with that. Um, but I have been certified with the city. This is my fourth year. And it will give you access to certain bids that you would never have um, the opportunity to, to see. So I highly recommend if you're working with anybody in the city of Chicago that you go for that certification. And the other one is the uh, state of Illinois. It's a also a requirement to be a certified BEP with the state of Illinois to participate in their bids as well. So these are the four areas um, that you can really work on within your business to be certified. And it you can get reciprocal um, certifications if you get that main one with WeBank. At least for me, I've been able to do it that way. So you, you want to be certified, are you qualified to be a certified women business owner? So the company must be run independently, have 51% owned and controlled by one or two women, there are three or more, it just has to be 51% owned by women. And the head person is running and managing and controlling. The business is has to be a woman. 
you need to meet the small business standards according to the SBA and the business has to take place in the United States. So if you meet this criteria, I highly encourage you to look into becoming certified. Okay, so we talked a little bit, but I really wanna dive deeper into the potential benefits that you can have from being a certified women business owner. The typical set aside on contracts for WBEs, and it's becoming, and I'm seeing it more and more and more over last year, this year, a uh, lot of these government contracts are putting specific set asides for a WBE. So it's typically between five and 15%. If you're a minority business enterprise, certified business enterprise, those set-asides are higher. Those percentages are higher. Now, if you are deciding between both, I would recommend that you can get certified for both. But when it comes to a contract, that could be qualified to be a minority and a women-owned business, you need to choose which one because they won't allow you on those contracts to be a minority and a women owned, you have to choose which one. So in the set aside, there's opportunities for you to collaborate as a tier two, which means you can um, be part of a contract as a tier two supplier with another company that is not women owned or minority owned business. And I will talk a little bit more about that later in the presentation. But the point I'm trying to make is there's specific set-asides in contracts which will um, allow you to gain access to contracts that you never would have the opportunity to participate in. I see that there might be a question. Oh, um, they can't, Stella, they cannot see the slideshow. Hold on, what now? This said, uh, here. They said, is there a slideshow? We can't see anything. It says I'm sharing my screen. I can see it on my end. Oh, others are chatting, saying that they can see it. So maybe. Um, I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. I can. Well, they're saying they can see it. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure <laughs> I saw that there was a question that, um, that I could answer. Okay. So, all right. I'm going to shut that down. Okay. Um, the other advantage, this is, a, this is like, um, you know, some armor in your toolkit, in your marketing box, in your business. And once you gain a successful contract and being a WBE or an MBE on that is part of that contract. This gives you long-term competitive advantage against your, your com competitors that are not certified as a WBE. So le you know, leverage this long-term competitive advantage because once you are in a contract as a WBE, it will be hard to replace you if you are you know, performing you know, your excellence and your performance and your delivery and all the things that a normal business person would be to gain. It does give you long-term competitive advantage. And as I have shown you at the beginning of the slide, this really increases visibility, recognition. There's a lot of programming, a lot of um, awards that are given to women-owned businesses that you wouldn't necessarily have. Um, so I have had increased visibility and recognition um, and you can too. Um, being certified gives you instant credibility. The process is long, it's daunting, it can be overwhelming. There's a lot of information you have to share, but the, everybody who works with WBEs knows that you have credibility out, the, out of the door because of the work that was taken place to get to that point. Um, you have opportunities as a WBE to work with other WBEs. And in a strong business development plan, and I'm going to mention it again, but it's really important. A lot of these big corporations want to know, you are a WBE, you're certified. What are you doing to support other WBEs? So these platforms allow you to collaborate with other WBEs so that you can um, 
show the amount of business that you are committing to your for your company for diversity as well. We have special educational programs, the WBDC, the city of Chicago, NABO, they all have specific educational programs, um, training programs, corporations love to have uh, you apply for mentorship programs. There's so much available to you. So I really, really highly recommend that you look into these programs, take advantage of the programs that are available to you to help you grow and develop your business. Okay. So those are advantages of a WBE to be certified. So what is the potential benefits for a corporation that is looking to work with a WBE? There are and can be certain tax benefits that you can get that the federal, federal government will grant to you when you track the amount of spend that you have within a WBE. Corporations need to talk to their accountants about it, but there is definite um, some tax advantages for doing it. A lot of major corporations are committed. They have a diversity statement. They're committed to working with women-owned businesses and they're tracking their own dollars as well and we have several that want to be in the billion dollar spend with WBEs and minority owned businesses. Um, it, it is a mission within corporations that they want to work with businesses. So this is a way when they work with the WBE to be able to track it, that they can meet those goals. And then partnering with major companies to be that certified WBE on those contracts as a tier two supplier, those dollars also count. And I do a lot of work within a tier two environment. As a small business owner, some of these contracts are so large that they don't, that the corporations or government entities do not want to give you a contract that could put you out of business if something happened to that contract. So they're very aware of how big you are and what, you know, what the size of this contract is. And if you can come in as a tier two, it's a way to grow your business and it's a way to get exposure. And it's a way for these companies, the corporations to be able to utilize a WBE certification. So what is the WBE certification? It's accepted by thousands of corporations. And it's a women business enterprise certification. And like I said, it's another, you know, tool that you have in your toolbox for marketing and exposure and visibility. Um, and the purpose of a WBE certification is to enable women-owned business to thrive in markets that they historically wouldn't, to gain exposure to those contracts that they normally wouldn't have exposure to. What is WOSB, the Federal Contracting Program? Same thing, it's through the SBI and it's all with governments and school districts and hospitals and municipalities. And they use a um, code to look up WBE certified businesses with a NASCI code. And I'm gonna tell you what a NASCI code is and um, what the NIGP code is and the differences of that. So this is a way for procurement people to look up your business. So you have to be familiar when you're thinking about going to be certified with these codes. Where does your business touch? And make sure that you apply for these codes. Now, there is another um, segment through the government, which is the economically disadvantaged WOSB. And this allows for people who qualify for this program to even have a more narrower segment in contract work. So there's specific requirements on uh, what the women's owner's net worth can be so that it can give preferential treatment to these economically disadvantaged WOSB contracts. The city of Chicago. 
City of Chicago has specific contracts that you cannot participate in unless you are certified with the city. They have their own certification and it is, um, it they will look at what you have with WeBank, but they do their own and it's it's very diligent. They, they really look hard and deep and make sure that you are truly who you say you are and um, in order to participate in, you know, Chicago public school systems or any of the government entities within the city, you have to be certified with the city. So once you have your WeBank certification and you have business in the city, I highly recommend that you apply for the city of Chicago. And uh, this certification is good for five years and you have to like, up, you know, re-up your information each year. Um, but it is, it's really powerful um, in order to have access to those contracts within the city. Similar with the state of Illinois, the state of Illinois has certain contracts that are only available to you if you are certified. And there is a listing that's public, it's online to be certified with the state, it's free, but it's a requirement in order for you to participate in bids. So that's another one that you must do right away. And they also have a reciprocal um, certification. So I'm certified with uh, WeBank, and then I can apply for the state of Illinois certification, taking the information as a reciprocal um, uh, BEP, and that that qualifies and it's a pretty fast process. So the documentation, when I, when I became certified, um, there's nothing on portals. There was no way for me to fax information. I had to take the entire history, all of the professional licenses, the resumes, the first, you know, signature check from the from the bank on who can sign checks, everything was in a big box and I had to carry it downtown to the WBDC's office so that they could look through all the paperwork and, um, you know, ask the questions, do the interview and things like that. Today, it's, it's, it's amazing. You put everything into a portal, you upload your information and it is undaunting. The information that you need to be able to provide. I would highly recommend you take this checklist. There's a checklist online and go to WeBank and get the checklist, have all your documents ready and then start the process. It is a long and lengthy process. They wanna make sure that you are who you say you are, that um, you are running the business, that there is 51% ownership, that you're making all the decisions. Um, so they verify everything. Um, which is great because um, I think it's really important that the people who are being certified are who they say that they are. So they do ask for a tremendous amount of information. And I'll just share a little story um, with me becoming certified. I had some customers because I sold into the automotive industry tell me, Lori, you are now president. You're running the Chilson company, which is a supplier for, you know, specialty raw materials into many, many different industries. And um, we are working with automated automotive companies that want us to work with certified business women business owners, pretty big customer of ours. So he said, can you, you know, become certified? Well, I really didn't know what they were talking about. So I researched online. I found um, WeBank and I was terrified of all the information. I'm like, I don't know if this is what I need to do. So I had nobody to really talk to. And then I found NABO, the National Association of Women Business Owners. I'm like, well, if I join that organization, then I'm going to be part of a, a huge community of women business owners. And I've got the logo that say I'm a women business owner. And that's how I got involved in NABO and fell in love with NABO and what it brings to um, small business and became the president, um, was running various uh, different chair uh, committee positions and then became the president of, um, of NABO. So it's kind of funny how it came around, but I quickly learned that that's great that you're a women-owned business, but we really need you to be certified. So that's when I, you know, I said, the customers are asking me to do this. 
it's very important in the automotive industry sector for me. I can probably expand my business. So that's when I, you know, really dived in, took the chance, took the risk and became certified and um, never looked back. So the other thing that is important for you to research before you become certified is to look up what kind of codes your business belongs in. So this can be a little confusing. You've got the NASCI codes, which is used for your certification through WeBank. Okay. And then you have the NIGP, the National Institute of Government Purchasing, which is used to be certified with the state of Illinois and then also the city of um, Chicago. And the codes are a little different um, for each, so they don't exactly correlate, but there you can just Google NASCI codes, look up, you can Google them and look and see how you dive deep. You have a broad classification and you drill down, drill down, drill down. And I would write down and make you know notes on the different codes that your business falls into because when you get certified, you want to make sure you've got the broad class because what happens is that procurement um, entities will look up for their contracts. They'll look at WBEs that have those codes and then you will get access to those bids and the contracts. So it's important for you to classify your business properly when you're becoming certified, okay? The um, United Nations Standard Products, the UNSPSC code is a very big drill down. And I'm going to show you an example of what that looks like. So for EWT, these are some of the major classifications that we have. They're pretty broad. You know, uh, industrial uh, supply wholesaler for chemicals. We do consulting services, admin services, and facility support. We have many others, but I just wanted to show you kind of the top line of what these codes look like. And then when you drill down, you can see these are all of the different codes within water treatment and within other areas of um, my business. And they really, you've drilled deep and there's a lot of different um, opportunities for you to make sure that you classify your business so that you can gain access to those contracts. So you're certified, you went through the process, you got certified, you're like, okay, where's the business? Where is the business? I'm certified. I heard that from a lot of uh, WBEs, we were certified, now what? You really have to work it just like you do any other business development plan. It's a tool for you to use. So a little bit different than uh, um, a regular business development plan because a lot of the procurement people want to see a capability statement. And I'm going to tell you, you've got to go into each corporate supplier diversity website of companies that you might be able to do business with and you have to register with those companies. So it takes some time to search those corporate suppliers, it takes time to research on their website, to find the portal where you can upload your information. And when you have an opportunity for a one-on-one -on -one matchmaking session, they wanna see what your, what your capabilities are. They wanna see it because they wanna know who you're doing business with. How big are you? If they have you know a million dollar contract and you're a hundred thousand dollar business, that's not gonna work. And I know that you're much bigger than that, but I'm just giving that as an example. So they want to see how you, how big, what your size is, what type of customers you are, what is your core value. So you have to have a capability statement. You have to register on supplier diversity websites. And I have examples of those. And then what we do a lot of is we search for bid opportunities through our government entities, procurement platforms. Um, through the WBDC, the Illinois PTAC, they send me, you know, daily, weekly emails on any kind of opportunity that might correlate back to those codes. Okay. There are other platforms that you can pay for that will help you search all of the different contracts that are available. And, um, 
there's so much that you can do for free. So I really don't um, spend a lot of money on it because we do it ourselves to look for the different bid opportunities that are out there. And you can sign up for bid notifications with various entities as well on the government side specifically. When you attend supplier diversity meetings and conferences, they have national and there's local conferences that are available to you. This is where you meet your supplier diversity procurement person. Most organizations have a dedicated person who is looking for supplier diverse um, suppliers, WBEs, MBEs, to be able to bring into their business. They are like the gatekeeper. They know what contracts that they have. They know who you need to talk to so they can get you an introduction to the person that you need to talk to for specific opportunities. And from there, it's just like any other business plan, business meeting, business, you know, you have to sell your capabilities, who you are as a company, what you do and provide that value just like everybody else. So having this certification gets you to the gatekeeper, but you need to be able to work your company as you would anybody else. They're the gatekeepers that get you to that person. Develop your pitch. A lot of uh, the WBDC and WeBank has pitch competitions. I was involved with the pitch competition. You have corporate partners that are sitting in the room listening to your pitch. Expo it's exposure that you would never gain. Um, and it's only available to certified business owners, these pitch competitions. And it's, it's just, it's amazing because the people that are in the room are listening to what you have to say. And then you have a side conversation after, hey, I want to introduce you to this person because I think your you know, product, your service, your company could be of benefit to us. From all these meetings, what I've done is created an opportunity pipeline where you, you know, you have a business development plan. You put your you put your opportunities in your pipeline and you rise up the ones that are there and you don't forget about the ones that maybe are gonna happen down the road, but keep track of the people that you talk to. Um, keep track of those opportunities that are coming when the contracts are up in a spreadsheet so that you're there, you're visible, just like you would any other business opportunity and follow up. Follow up, be front and center. I mean, these are business 101, um, but it's really important to know that although you're certified, you still need to develop this business plan for your own supplier diversity, okay? And utilize the resources that are available to you. So I'm gonna just give you a little, if you don't have a capability statement, it's a, I'm gonna just share it with you some of the highlights of what these corporations are looking for. And they'll ask you for this. You can share it with them, make sure that it's information that you feel comfortable putting on there. And it's your marketing piece. It's your, here you go. Here's my one pager for supplier diversity, right? It's a one page document. Talk about your services. What differentiates your company? Your past performance, as I said, I share dollars because um, they, you know, a lot of corporations want to know what your dollars are. And then your corporate data, what are those codes? Because they're going to look right, they're all trained to know what are those NASCY codes that your business conforms to, right? Done Your DUNS number, any of your certifications, you list them there, any of your accolades, if you had awards or if you're on a board, like I'm on the um, advisory council for the WBDC. Put that, all that information, how you're supporting other women businesses, put everything on this one page capability statement. I talked about registering in corporate portals. So I took this off of BP's um, corporate site. I work with BP and they are committed to a billion dollars right here to spend with certified diverse suppliers annually by 2025. It's amazing. 
and they have it very easy for you to find how to register on their portal. So they tell you how to get started. You must be certified, understand their business, research what they have um, as an opportunity for you to participate in their business, complete the registration, and then they will come to you when there's an opportunity for your NASCI code. Um, also at these conferences, you can set up and go to their booth and talk to them about opportunities that come in. But this process of registering on the corporate portal, it's a dedicated process because it takes time. There's a lot of information. Some with um, energy companies, there's 30 pages worth of information that they wanna know about your business. And others, it's just a simple capabil capability statement. Um, some can take an hour longer, some can take 15 minutes. So it's committed, it's commitment to being registered so that when an opportunity comes, they will come and make sure that you're included on those bids. Bid buy for Illinois, state of Illinois, I get these emails every day. Typical email, I just, just copied it. Um, you can see you have access to anything that's within your code here as well for the state of Illinois. And some of these opportunities are only sent to WBEs and not sent to other entities that service them. So um, that's why it's really important for you to be certified with the state of Illinois as well. You get a lot of information, a lot of opportunity to be able to participate on their bids that are specific for you. The Illinois PTAC. This is just a segment of what I get. I get probably 30 or 40 opportunities listed out and then you can click on them, drill down, see if it's an opportunity for you. And the WBDC helps me by sending me these emails and then I can drill down, look and see if there's something that I can participate in. These are things that I've learned over 10 years. It, it, it um, took me a long time to understand where do I go to have access? to information to see if I want to bid. And then if a bid is very large, I look at other relationships that I have that can qualify for that bid where I can come in as a tier two. And then together we go and put the contract together. So there's a lot of ways that you can fulfill your WBE spend for the contract. Um, and you just have to really well, awareness is one, and then work it and connect with as many people as you can in order to grow your business. At these one-on-one -on -one matchmaking sessions that I have had, a lot of these procurement diversity personnel will ask me, Lori, what is your company's supplier diversity program? And when I was first asked that, I was like, oh my gosh, well, I do business here, 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 but I never put it into a formal place that I can track. So now, of course, I have a whole dedication to what, you know, all my WBE business, I'm tracking the revenues that I spend with other WBEs and the percent of what that is to my business. It's a, it's, it is a strategy and you have to think about it because the way that you track on your financials and things like that in order to, to say, I have X percent of my business that I support other WBEs. This is where if you're involved with women-owned organizations, with NABO, with the WBDC, with WeBank, with nonprofits that are women-owned, and I'm the co-founder of um, Female Strong, which is to help women, young girls in junior high and high school to become entrepreneurs. That is where you will find great companies that you wanna work with. You can share your capabilities statement if you want to, um, but it is, it's, it's a way for you to build your own supplier diversity program within your own company. And then you share that when, um, when these corporations ask, what are you, how much are you doing with other diverse companies? Powerful, they're very powerful. 
many resources are available, as I've mentioned throughout. The SBA, WeBank, WBDC, City of Chicago, um, many, many resources that you have available to you to help you along the way that offer all these programs that I've been talking about throughout this session this morning. So in conclusion, and, and I um, would love to know like where you come from, if you're certified, if you're not, is certification right for you? Um, knowledge on which certification that you should pursue, how to work that certification, um, think about developing your own supplier diversity plan and getting help when needed. And, you know, I, I just love helping other women businesses um, to, to really be the best that they can be. And as I mentioned before, the two, I have two um, certified WB businesses and one I sold to a global company. And that business that I had as a WBE stayed with them, even though they didn't get credit for the WBE certification. Um, it's just been a tremendous journey for me. And if I have knowledge and I have something that I can help share, then that's you know what I, I'm driven to do. And in turn, it helps me in my business, in my relationships, and to be stronger and, um, and, and grow uh, as a person and in my businesses as well. I did put my contact information in the chat in the beginning, so I'd love to hear from you. And I'd love to open up the floor for questions, please. Okay, if you have questions, please raise your hand so I can unmute you. Jasmine, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me, Lori? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you so much for the presentation. It was very informative. I appreciate it. I just have one quick question. Would you recommend a specific or a certain order to apply for certification? I know some avenues of certification might be more difficult than others, um, but um, we're a business starting out um, in the city of Chicago. So would you recommend a specific order to apply for certification with the various entities? From my experience, I would recommend that you certify with WeBank first. Okay. Then you can get the reciprocal certifications after that. Okay. And that's national. Now, I now I, I would love, you know, side chat. I would really like to dive deep and understand your, before I, you know, I, that's a broad statement, but what is your business? Who are you serving? So I might change my mind if I know that. So okay. feel free to um, take my information down and we can chat later and then I can give you a better recommendation. But I think a broad stroke would be WeBank. But if you don't have national uh, corporate um, opportunities, then maybe we would think about something else. Okay. Thank you so much. That makes sense? Okay. Thank you. Paula, go ahead. Hi, Lori. Hi, Paula. Sorry, quick question. Um, I just wanted to see your contact information slide again. Um, it went by a little too fast for me to screen oh. share. Um, okay. but this was this was really great. I really appreciated this. Um, I did have a question about length of time. Um, do um most companies um have a length of time? Um, maybe two years, three years that you should be in business before they take you on as um a diversity supplier. Um, each um, certification has its own parameters, but I think WeBank just, um, they were two or three years, but now they've lessened that. I think it's possible. Um, how long have you been in business, Paula? Um, I, as a sole proprietor, I've been in business for five years, but I'm switching to an LLC. So I'm wondering, will that have, um, you know, some you kind of, um, you, you should get fine. Yeah. Oh, I'll be, I'll be fine. Okay. I think you should be fine. I think you should try it. 
And again, take my contact information and I can dive deep with you. Um, but I don't think that that's gonna, it's just that LLC changing to an LLC. That's awesome. I'm an LLC, but that's just the makeup of your corporate structure. So the fact that you've been in business as a solo entrepreneur, I think you'd be fine. No problem. Okay. And I'll definitely, um, buy your book. Thanks so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Um, any more questions? Please raise your hand. Come on, I love questions. Don't be shy. Okay, look like we have one. Marissa, go ahead. Hi, Lori. Thanks for the presentation. It was well put together and informative. Um, my question is, um, well, basically, I'm starting now. Um, I just been a part of the business cohort I want to have a practice to help the adolescent population uh, gain skills to become independent adults so it's really like the foundational piece and you know my why statement and stuff, things like that so I'm very like much in the beginning but I want to know like in the future I would like to partner with schools and maybe like the uh, clinics and get referrals from the hospital, like when the uh, uh, adolescents get admitted and they really want to know like how to heal. So that's really my practice is going to be healing, giving them skills to become independent adults, personal, professional development. Um, I'm thinking of some like mental health awareness and just exploring their likes and interests because we're stuck in the age where people are, are like in their phones and really not active and knowing what they need to do so this hill my practice is gonna help elevate authentic life amazing um Thanks. it sounds to me i it, keep going I, I think you might have a question there. <laughs> oh no 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 so basically like i said when it comes to the business side and getting the referrals from the schools and the hospitals and the clinics i think that will be like ideal like i want the adolescents to be sent to me in order to heal and gain the skills that they need to become independent adults. So it sounds to me like networking opportunities would be really advantageous for you. And um, there are some uh, minority owned um, and WBE. Um, there is a conference and a, a workshop type. It's not a real workshop, but where they you have all the procurement people from the schools, from the hospitals that are there. So send you can send me your information and then I can, uh, when I get that, I can kind of share with you what that organization is. And I'd go to those meetings and okay. network and talk okay. to people. And For sure. You know, so and that can help you to understand what your opportunities could be. Okay, sounds good. I'll be sending you an email shortly. Thank you, Marissa. You're welcome. Which one do you commonly mostly um, use? So for for if I'm going to be helping you, it would probably be HC. I would do my my consulting and speaking business. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We have some more hands up. Moesha, go ahead. Miosha, hi. Miosha, I'm sorry. Hi, Miosha. No problem. Um, my question is, I pretty much qualify for an MB, WOSB, WBE, VOSB, and a SDVOSB. So which one should I get or should I just try to get them all? Because I know you said um, the uh, WB. Um, that's the one um, you were uh, talking about more so than the minority one. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also a veteran, disabled veteran and all that. Well, you know, um, I, I think the one that can, the, the main one that will allow you to get the others is what you should go for. And then depending on the contract, some have a set aside for veteran, right? Some with minority is a bigger spend but minority is also a bigger, broad group of people as well. I, I definitely recommend that you do them all. And if you're looking of where to start, it could be minority or women owned. Then the other ones will dovetail from that. 
because the information that you're providing for one will correlate to the next. So you're already gathering all the information. So for you to be certified as a WBE versus a minority, the information is probably the same, very similar. You're not gonna have to get new information that you're gonna be uploading into portals. It's just time. But for you to be registered, you know, nationally, that's the minority certification. That's the veteran. That's all, you know, WOSB. That's all the ones you're talking about. So deciding what your business is, again, which one would give you the quickest hit is the one that you should start with. But the reciprocals from WeBank, they go down right away. With WeBank, you get WOSB. You just click a box and you have a few more information uh, that you have to submit. And then you've got both. Okay, for the state, once you're certified as a WBE for the WeBank, it's reciprocal. You plug in your information. It doesn't take long. They don't, have, you know, they already know that you're certified. You get the reciprocal. For veteran, I don't know. I'm sorry, I, I'm not familiar with that. And then I think there was another one you said that I wasn't familiar with. It's um, for disabled veterans. So there's a veteran, um, and then there's also a certification for being a disabled veteran. That might be similar where it's like WeBank and WOSB, it might be together. We'd ha you'd have to look at, you know, the portal of what the information is and how that works. I'm, I'm not as familiar. And yes, my presentation mostly was on my knowledge. My knowledge is WBE. So um, and I don't have okay. access to those others, but you're on the right, you're on the right path. Thank you. What, can we have another hand up? Go ahead, Felicia. Good morning. Um, I just have um, a quick question. Um, I applied with the city of Chicago for certification. I was just wondering, do you know like how long does the process take once you apply? Because I believe I applied in April and I when I checked the website, I know it's still saying process as of June 1st. Yeah, um, I don't know specifically because I'm not with the agency, but I do know that when I first applied my very first time, it took me a very long time, okay. a, a very long time. Then when the renewals come up each year, it was quicker, but they mm -hmm. still, it's still several months. Um, um, it's just a longer process with the city. I, I don't know, Stella, if you have an answer to that or not, but it's um, every agency has its own, you know, waiting period and and it's just a lot of people wanting to be certified so I think it's just a mass amount of you know applications to get through okay and you would still suggest to still do the we bank certification as well well depending on your business again okay um so like I said I'd love to dive deep and understand I try to give you know we bank is for corporations and national counts mm, okay WOSB is government right mm. Right. They are both um, nationally recognized. Um, so I, you know, that's up to you and what your business is. If you go outside of the city of Chicago, then you might want to broaden with the state and with WeBank and with the minority owned or whatever you apply for. Okay. Does that make sense? Right. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay, Lori, look like we have time for at least two more questions. We have another one from, I'm, I know I'm going to say this wrong, Bettina? Yes, it's Bettina. You said it exactly oh, okay. right. Okay. Uh, so my question is, is that, um, and I know you can only speak on um, things that you're familiar with. What I'm hearing is, is a lot of people, at least from on the call, are service-based. Uh, what do you recommend or can you recommend someone who is product-based? Um, so I have a, a candy business that is, I have a boozy candy business. Um, so yes, I would want to be certified. Uh, but my question is, is how um, valuable is it for me to be certified with the products that I'm doing? Um, is it more traction, uh, more opportunities when you have a service compared to a product base? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So can you sell to corporations? Um, currently right now? Yes. 
Right. So if you can sell to corporations and they're looking for that spend, so these corporations all have a spend that they need to, you know, meet their standard and their goals. And if you have a product, then they can, the opportunity is for you to get into a chain or into a, you know, one of these uh, corporate opportunities if they're looking to add that into their mix, right? Um, the other thing that I will say is the state of Illinois has your um, uh, woman of the year um, and uh, biz business from the SBA. And one of the winners several years ago is a chocolate company out of Chicago. Um, and I'm going to say the name wrong, so don't hold me to it. It's a voyage. voyage. She does all of like the bacon flavored chocolate. They're in O'Hare. It's a purple box, very well known, but she was the state of Illinois winner for her business. So there are opportunities for you to speak and be in front of people to get your business out there and what you've got going on if you're certified. So I just, I just think that that could be an opportunity for you. Okay. Thank you. Could be. You never know. Just try to work any marketing angle you can, right? That's leveraging your assets. How can you, how can you elevate? How do you elevate what you are bringing to the world? Just use every uh, resource that you can. That's a resource. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? Please raise your hand. We have time for like one more. Let me check the uh, Q and A box. See if we. Yeah, are uh, most um, of the participants? I assume your most of them are entrepreneurs. Is there any government um, or corporate people on the line that they have any feedback? I'm not sure who the audience is. So. No. Well, I thank you all for participating with me and sharing your stories with me and asking the questions and letting me share what is possible with you today. Well, thank you, Lori, for your presentation today. To receive credit for today's webinar, log in to chicago.gov forward slash BACP certificate. This, pro this process is now being streamlined for those of you who used to do it the old-fashioned way, which was sending us an email. In order to receive credit for today's webinar, please log in to chicago.gov forward slash BACP certificate. Um, to find out more about our upcoming webinars, please visit chicago.gov forward slash business education. Thank you and have a great weekend. You too. Thank you. Thank you.